Hello there, it's Joe the CRM chap here and we're back with a new video in my series all about Microsoft Exam PL400. This is the developer's exam for those who are looking to validate their skills in building solutions on top of or indeed extending out the Power Platform. So in today's video we're going to be taking a look at custom connectors. Uh, now these give you a really nice way in which you can bring in any sort of custom API, maybe it's one based in the cloud or one on-premise, you know, into the Power Platform so you can actually use it uh, amongst tools such as let's say a Canvas app, maybe a Power Automate Flow or even as part of something like Logic Apps. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you the process and how you go about creating a custom connector and we're going to sort of uh, build, do this by building a very sort of simple Azure function and then go through the steps on how we then uh, incorporate that as part of our uh, custom connector. So I'm in the Maker Portal at the moment as you can see but I just need to jump out first of all into Azure and that when, once I, what I want to do is create a new resource and it's going to be of type uh, Azure function. Let's just find it on the list here. There it is, function app. So I'm just going to create that. Uh, I'll just call this my PL400 uh, function app. I'll just put my initials on there just to make sure it's unique. Uh, in this case, we uh, uh, can make this a .NET uh, 3.1 uh, application, and I'll just make sure it's in uh, the region that I'm in currently, which is UK South. So I'm just going to review and create that. Uh, it will take a few moments just to create uh, once it's finished validating. Uh, there shouldn't be any issues on here, but let's just wait a second to see. Okay, all good. So I'm going to hit create down there. And it's going to take a few minutes now just to uh, push this out. So let's just uh, give it a minute or two just to complete. Okay, so that's all done and dusted. So I'm going to hit on go to resource to open up the, the function app. Um, and instead of um, typically what we would do with the function app is that we maybe use Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code to build out um, the code. But um, for the purpose of this example, we're just going to go straight in and code it this way. This wouldn't really be the recommended way in which I would uh, suggest that we go about doing this. So what I'm going to do is going to click on add up here uh, and I'm just going to call this um, our sort of uh, PL400 sort of uh, sample. We want to make sure this is a HTTP trigger because we're going to be calling this via an API. And then we just need to give some details up down here. So I'll just call this my PL400 um, uh, calculation. Uh, and we can leave everything else there as the default settings. So I click on add. That's going to add in my sort of function app uh, ready to sort of go. Uh, and when it's there, I can just hit refresh on here. Uh, there it is. I can click straight into there, click on code and test. And it will allow me to actually start building out the code. And we can see we get a C sharp class file on here or CSX file that we can start to start to work with. So there's some stuff that's here that we can leverage already um, and some stuff that we want to sort of replace. So um, in this example, what we want to do is we just want to add on a couple of using statements because we're going to be using some uh, additional um, libraries, um, including a link uh, library from uh, Newton Soft. Uh, we need to add in a, uh, a, ca a sort of a class that we want. Um, so I'm going to put this um, underneath my um, main function down here. So I'm just going to call this uh, public class. I'll just call this uh, calc request, like so. Uh, and I'll just paste in the attributes, uh, like so. Uh, just get it looking tidy as well. Otherwise, my OCD will go a little bit crazy. Um, okay, so that's done. Um, we now just need to clean up the, the run method. So everything that's below uh, the first sort of log statement on here, we don't really sort of want. So let's just get rid of that completely and start afresh. Then from here, what we want to do, we're going to be effectively receiving a request of some data in. So it's going to be these data points on here. We're going to consume that data and then return sort of the output of a calculation based on that. So I just want to add in my request body first of all. Uh, we need to then declare a new instance of our calc request uh, like so. So we're just going to convert that from JSON, just deserialize uh, that object. Uh, so something like this we will use. And then we just take in our request body. Uh, then we actually perform the calculation. So in this case, um, I could just paste in some additional code on here, which will do all of that. Uh, we'll also just log that back out just so we can keep an eye on it and make sure it's doing what we think we want it to do. 
and then at the back end of it we just return um, a new return that as a sort of object so in this case I just want to do uh, return uh, new action result uh, it's going to be an OK just so we know that it's completed successfully and then we just want to return a new um, sort of um, CPM uh, equals CPM like so I just need to make sure that's capitalized okay and so now we've got a, a function out we've got our API which is good and ready to go so we're going to leave this tab open because uh, we're going to need to come back here in a few minutes but as a next step we can now jump back into the maker portal and we can start to build out our custom connector so typically we do this by going down to custom connectors in the list on the left hand side we can see we've got a new button up here um, we'd also maybe want to make sure we're working in the context of a solution. Um, in fact, let's, let's in fact let's let's do the best practice thing from the start. Let's work from a solution. That is usually probably the best thing to do. So let's do that first. So in a, into our solution, click on new at the top, and we should see that we've got an option somewhere on here for custom connector, like so. So hit that button. We now we need to sort of specify some settings for this. So in this case, I'm going to call this um, my sort of um, PL400 uh, calculator. Typically, we maybe want to give a description or maybe adjust the sort of the background image, like so. Scheme will typically always be HTTPS unless you are you have got a, an unsecure sort of endpoint, like so. And what we need to do now is actually put in the URL from our sort of function app. So I can get this by going to get function app up here. I can see I get the full path there for the particular function. Uh, I just want to uh, extract out. Uh, the URL portion of that which I'm just doing on the other screen so I just want to get that in remove the HTTPS at the end like so um, base URL we can sort of leave as default and at this point I just want to go on to the um, on to the next step by clicking on security now you've got a few options on here so typically you can maybe just have it so that there's no authentication or use basic or API key or of two is probably the one you're going to want to go for in most scenarios but you may have a older or in this case a, an API that only supports um, a specific authentication option so in the case of our uh, function app it's going to be an API key because we're sort of just creating this um, quickly from the sort of the portal so I'm going to select API key as my option uh, I'm going to give it a name of API key like so uh, the parameter name is going to be code and this is something that we're going to include as part of the URL i.e. it's going to be a sort of query parameter on there uh, so with that done, we can then move on to definition and we can now build out the various different actions that we want um, for the API. But I just want to first of all just save my changes so I don't lose them by clicking on create connector at the top. It'll take just a few moments to save. Okay, so with that saved then I can now define uh, things such as the actions, so the, the types of operations that my API can perform. If my connector um, supports, wants, you want to sort of trigger our connector based on what's going on in the external system, then we can also set that up as well. That's not something we're going to cover on this um, on this today. We've also got the ability to do references and policies as well. Uh, but as I say, for now, we're just going to build out a single action for a particular um, API. So in this case, it's going to be PL400 uh, calculator. Um, but typically, you want to make sure you put a description in. We won't bother in this particular case. Uh, I'm just going to call this um, particular operation get required CPM like so. Um, now, um, to help us in terms of defining, okay, what the request and response, you know, what, what the what the core data bits are uh, for our API, we can actually just import in an example of what it's going to be fed through each time. So in this case, what I can do is um, define the what the sample request looks like. So it's going to be a post. Um, it's going to be a um, this full endpoint on here that is queried, uh, like so. Uh, no headers that we need to specify, and then all we're doing is just providing a JSON body object which looks a little bit like this. I can then click on import. It's going to go off and sort of just define all that for me, like so, which is quite nice. Uh, and then likewise, we can do the same for the default response. So in this case, we're just expecting just a single value back in a JSON string, so CPM. No headers that... Um, that we need to potentially work with as well. So again, I can just add that in, click on import, and it's going to build out my sort of default uh, response for that as well. And that's everything ready to go. I can actually now just click on update connector at the top just to um, get that saved, and we can actually give this a bit of a test now. So just give that a second to save. So to test it then, what we do is we go to test at the top, obviously um, and then we first of all need to define a connection for the um, the security 
options that we defined earlier. So a connection is always separate from you know the type of uh, connection type that we sort of specify. Um, so in this case, what we need to do is just create a connection and just give the API key that we're going to be using for this function app. So again, I'm just going to paste this in from the URL I got from Azure a few seconds ago. It will then just go off and create that for us. I might just need to click the refresh button to sort of select it like so. And then what we can do is actually just give this a quick test as well, which is quite useful. So in this case, what I want to do is maybe just specify, let's say maybe 20, uh, 25, maybe have a length of 10, and then maybe do air changes, let's say five again as an example. Hit the test operation button. It's gonna go off and contact our, our function app. Uh, and in this case, we do get a, um, a bit of an error message. Um, so it might be we just need to check some of the properties that were, that were supplying. So I'll just be back in two seconds once I've got this fixed. Okay, so in this case, it's actually an issue in my code. So um, in true fashion, I forgot to uh, do a semicolon at the, t at the end there. So let's just hit save. Um, and hopefully then these errors down here um, will sort of vanish. Yep, okay, that's compiled successfully. Let's run another test now and just hopefully that will then just complete without any problems whatsoever. Um, yes, it has. So indeed, we get a response back straight away 416, which confirms that our uh, custom connector is working as we want it to. So at this point, then I can then just again, just hit update connector and then close that off. And what we've now built out is available for me to use on this particular environment that's set up. Um, so I can potentially start to leverage this as part of, let's say, as, as I said earlier, maybe a canvas app, maybe a power automate flow. Uh, it really is up to me what I want to do on there. So as an example, then if I was to uh, just close this down again, uh, maybe let's go back into our solution and just create a new sort of cloud flow and give you an example here in terms of how that experience looks. Um, so we're just going to not too concerned about the trigger action here. So I'll just do manually trigger. If I go down here and if I start to search for connectors, we should see that our PL400 calculator appears in the list down there. And I can just sort of call that. I can see uh, it's asking me to specify a connection. So let me just do that again in terms of um, setting up the connection based on the API key that I've got for the function app. Paste that in like so, create that. And in this case, it's brought through the single action that is available on there. And again, I can put in any data that I want on here. I'm not going to be too concerned about what uh, what is here. Um, and this will work much in much the same way as our um, test was a few seconds ago. So once this is saved, I'll be able to just run this flow or just trigger this flow. And we'll be able to just confirm that the values get um, sent through successfully. So yeah, that's saved now. Let me just do a manual trigger on that one. Click on continue to run it, run the flow, close that down, and we should see our results coming back from the test in a second. Um, it might be that we just need to go back up to here first. Yeah, there we go. Test succeeded down there. So this is really good. So now I've got a connector that I can use throughout my particular environment. Um, if I did want potentially other uh, users to start working with this then what I can do is I can go into my uh, back into my maker portal go to custom connectors up here I can see I've got the connector available in here I could maybe choose to invite other users in the tenant to maybe start working with it so therefore they can then start to use it alongside their flows um, and their, their canvas apps potentially or you know if I'm an ISV um, uh, independent solution vendor and I'm wanting to make this connector more generally available you know to my to my customers then I can go through the certification process and get this rolled out so that anybody in anywhere in the globe using the Power Platform can leverage it. So you've got some really nice options here with your custom connectors that can suit both internal and, and potentially external sort of requirements for your, your connector. You know, and as we saw, it's really, really easy to actually get one set up. You know, you don't have to be an expert around it. Um, you know, and potentially the steps that we saw, you could look to even automate them if you've got, let's say, a Postman collection or an open API file. You could just import that instead again. And again, all this, all these steps will be automated for you and your custom connector will be sat there ready to go. So I hope this video has been useful um, in terms of your exam prep or just um, showing you how custom connectors work. 
Um, please uh, give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Please um, subscribe and follow along with the series. Um, we, we, there's a whole load of videos um, covering all the different topics in the PL400 exam and also more to come as well. So it'd be great to have you along uh, for the journey. All you need to say for now is thanks again and take care. Cheers.